Hey ladies and gentlemen, welcome back to the channel. Got a match for you here on the Land of Fire top tier in the Tier 7 Premium Pan Asian Destroyer, the Fen Yang. Also known, sanitized by Wargaming because they need those sales to uh, people to play in Communist China. Real name of the ship is the Fen Yang. But here we call it Northern Dragon, with an extremely stereotypical red and gold paint job. Because only dragons exist in Asian mythology, and there aren't any other animals, so or creatures of any kind. So lowest common denominator uh, stereotyping going on here. Really shameful. The name of the ship is the Fen Yang. On PC, the name of the ship is the Fen Yang. Have some balls. Good grief. Yeah, no one in China plays World of Warships on PC. That's why. All right. Got a Bismarck out here. Got another ship out here. Really quickly, let's talk about the history of the Fen Yang. Originally was a Japanese destroyer known as Yoizuki. Was uh, produced too late to participate in the war. Survived the war at Nori, which apparently is a city or a port in Japan. The Fuyutsuki subclass of the Akizuki destroyers. Uh, construction was simplified. Main differences were simplified bow design, removed the rear deck house, and fitted two dimensional air inlet for the boilers. However, the IJM was not satisfied with the design. So it was transferred to the Republic of China in 1947. Here we got spotted. We're going to light up the Bismarck with these guns. So this was an actual ship with an actual name that actually existed, although it did not participate in World War II. We're just going to continue to farm damage from the Bismarck here. While we are doing that, let me go over some differences between the Fen Yang and the Akizuki based on WoW's builds. Really got to tell everybody uh, Father Mundy is kicking ass over there at WoW's builds. If you haven't joined up WoW's builds yet, if you haven't given any money to WoW's builds yet, you should. We get hit with radar by the Mogami. Presumably, anyway. We switched armor piercing. We're going to think about torping, but decide not to. Uh, the radar, I guess, went away or ran out, so we will continue to shoot at him. We do send some torpedoes his way. We do take splash damage from way off in the distance. The Mogami is close to death. And right as we shoot, I think somebody else takes him out. Oh, we get the kill. First blood. All right. Good times. All right. We are spotted again by someone else's radar or somebody's radar. Uh, that chip that was very close to us gets killed. I think it was a Bismarck B. Maybe he had sonar. Who knows? Anyway, we're hiding in our smoke screen. We have a lot of time left on the smoke screen. Very long duration. So don't be afraid to use these judiciously to farm damage or to stay alive while in a base cap. All right, Duke York out there. We'll start shooting at him. Let me go back to the comparison between the Fen Yang and the Akizuki. All right, really small difference. Concealment, base concealment, Akizuki 6.8, Northern Dragon 7.1. In terms of the consumables, the Akizuki gets two torpedo reload boosters. The Northern Dragon gets three torpedo reload boosters. Also is the option of DFAA instead of the speed boost. I don't recommend that at all. Um, differences in terms of the guns. Akizuki, 160 rounds per minute. Northern Dragon, 102 rounds per minute. Uh, Akizuki, 1200 HE max damage. Northern Dragon, 1500 HE max damage. Akizuki 5% fire chance, Northern Dragon 8% fire chance. Here I'm deciding it's time to leave the cap. Too many enemy ships are pushing in. We did send torpedoes at the North Carolina, but for the sake of my life, 
it is time to leave. Uh, back to the stats. Akizuki's 1700 uh, armor-piercing shell damage, pardon me. Northern Dragon, 2050 armor-piercing damage. Akizuki re torpedoes reload 10 seconds quicker. Northern Dragon torpedoes have a 2 kilometer longer range. Here is a big hidden stat. Reaction time for the torpedoes. Akizuki, 9.76 seconds. Northern Dragon, 4.59 seconds. So though we missed the torpedoes there on the North Carolina... Um, these torpedoes generally are much harder to react to and give your intended victim much less time to react. All right, got a Monarch over here. We're just keeping him spotted. As you can see, the Charlie Cap is in the process of falling. We would not have been able to defend that. Our team uh, is getting beat up here, but we are going to go help capture Bravo. And, uh, you know, unfortunately, when you don't want to be spotted and you don't want to burn your last smoke screen, there's nothing you can do waiting for these torpedoes to reload except for hang out in the cap. So at least we're getting a cap for our team. I really don't like it when quote unquote friendly ships sail right next to a destroyer that is not spotted because an enemy could shoot at that ship and miss and hit the destroyer. I also don't like when I'm trying to capture a base and another ship that's very easy to hit sails through the cap circle because then it'll get reset. And as you can see, that cruiser player paid for his really bad decision making by getting dev struck. Uh, North Carolina, are we going to launch torpedoes here? Yes, we are. We're also going to inadvertently dodge torpedoes. The Monarch is spotted by something or someone else, so we're going to just let that go. And we're going to move out here over into uh, Alpha because we lost Charlie. Can't defend that. And I'm not going to hang around just waiting for the Monarch to get killed. I've got to go do something to help my team. So we're going to traverse the map in this match and go over to Alpha and try to engage destroyers. We do get one torpedo strike on the North Carolina, but I think he damage cons right there, and so there will not be any flooding. The enemy flips alpha, and at this point, it is just a numbers game. Our team apparently did some really bad decision making and some really poor gameplay. And so I know we are behind the eight ball here just gauging his movement and he is not coming at us the monarch so we are going to leave him alone all right moving into the alpha cap my goal is to find and destroy the enemy destroyers hopefully that will even up things for our team um because that ship just got killed it will not even up things for our team and so really at this point we are up against it all right, there is the enemy destroyer. That is an Akatsuki. And right as about, we're about to finish him off. He gets killed by my teammate. There is another destroyer in the smoke screen over here. And I would really love to shoot at him. We do have the HE loaded. That was before. Um, I went to Wow's Builds and got all the stats. By the way, the arming threshold of these shells, 17 millimeters, so they will arm, in theory, against a similar tier destroyer. So there is the Fletcher. He doesn't have a lot of health left. All it takes is one salvo for our second kill. And now we can proceed to help uh, flip the cap for our team. All right, we are spotted. So we'll put up our smoke screen. That may have been a waste of a smoke screen. Uh, but seeing as we were just shot at, I will consider it not a waste of a smoke screen. We're going to start shooting at the Monarch, and including poor aim. Switch to HE, hopefully to set him on fire. And we're waiting. Uh, 
All right. So unfortunately, in this ship, you are reliant on other teammates to spot at times when you're trying to farm damage from your smoke screen. So because he is encroaching quickly based on his last movement, I am going to uh, leave my own smoke screen, which is a shame because this is a beautiful, long lasting smoke screen that we could have farmed a lot of damage out of. We do get a solo cap, but right now survival is more important than hanging out in a smoke screen. So we are beating feet and getting the heck out of Dodge. We have lost every cap, but this cap due to the poor play of my teammates. The only other ship, <laughs> sorry teammates, but I'm just saying I'm still alive. You guys all died and we're losing this match. My other teammate is up on the border of the map. I know he's chasing a ship up there. I think this is a bad idea. All right, got the North Carolina over here. Presumably the Monarch came into the Alpha Cap. And I don't want to hit an island. But at some point, I am going to have to fall back. Because all the enemy ships have come over here. So we leave the Alpha Cap. And we will surrender it to the enemy team. Something we have to do to survive. Alright, four on two. There is the Monarch. We will send our torpedoes his way. We will not use our torpedo reload booster. And I'm just doing that because the Monarch looks like he is spotting me. <laughs> oh God, you really got to manage your detectability in the ship. We do take a little bit of damage there, but those torpedoes are splendiferous. Devastating strike kill number three on the Monarch. All right, now we'll hit the torpedo reload booster. And we're going to shoot these torpedoes eventually at the North Carolina. We do shoot down the plane that was up in the air. So this AA works. All right, looking at the map. It is three on two. A contribution from my teammate other than running across the map. or I'm sure he's trying to kill a ship that he's chasing, but I'm just not sure he's going to be successful at it. And you got to cap the bases to win this kind of match, especially when you're down by 300 points and it's just not happening. All right. So here I should have turned into the cap circle. Um, that's my bad. Um, we still might not have won the match, but instead of hanging out here outside the cap, I should have been pushing towards the North Carolina and I did not do that. And that may have made a small difference in the outcome. We do light them up trying to set them on fire, but it doesn't matter. A couple of torpedo strikes. Kill number four. And we unlock the high caliber metal. All right, it's two versus two, but we don't have any cap circles. And here's where I'm saying I should have pushed into the cap. Now we are have to just trundle back in here. Really slow ship, no propulsion. The cruiser Baltimore gets taken out. I just up at the border of the map. What? Why? Why would you do that? All right. Who knows? I'm sure he's a great guy. I mean, he had to grind the XP to get there. One would think he knows what he's doing. The border of the map is not the place to be in a domination match. How do you not know that? All right. And he wasn't running away. He was chasing someone. He's on the enemy's border. All right. We go into Alpha here. We are in the last minute of the match. We are not even going to have time to cap this out. And so we can't win. And so realizing that the only thing I can do is <laughs> just sit here and launch torpedoes into the mist. In theory, the uh, Duke York could run into them and die. You know? Salvo number one will hit the reload booster. And uh, eventually launch salvo number two here as soon as we spot him again. 
But I have to think that we did not lose this match because I did not make the right decisions. We lost this match because some of our teammates did not make the right decisions. And right as we're about to cap, cap this, the match is going to end. And so we do not get the crack in. Oh, just so disappointing when you have a really nice match like that. And this, it's in a loss. All right, here we are in the defeat screen. High caliber medal. Uh, devastating strike medal. First blood medal. 124,682 total damage. 152 main battery hits, 7 torpedo strikes, 4 kills, 2 solo base caps, 1 assisted base cap. We ended up with just short of 900,000 silver in a loss. 4,365 ship XP, 11,079 uh, commander XP. I can only imagine what those would have been in a win. Here we are at the top of the board in the loss. 3 medals, 4 big kills, 2238 base XP in the Northern Dragon. So it's an Akizuki with differences. The real name of the ship is the Fenyang. Let's go into the port and see the Fenyang. All right, terms of the modifications, aiming system mod one, propulsion mod two, concealment system mod one, and main battery mod three. In terms of the loadout, two charges of the smoke generator, two charges of the engine boost, and as noted earlier, I wouldn't use DFAA unless you're doing a main build, uh, three charges of the torpedo reload booster. We were running all of the epic flags except for the epic ship XP booster flag. So we got the commander, the global, and the credit booster, rare battle booster for movement speed and cooldown time, the permanent northern dragon camouflage, and uh, the crimson fleet flag. 22,500 hit points with our build. Got those four. Twin 100 millimeter turrets, 11.1 kilometer firing range, 3.9 second reload, 10 and a half second turn time, HE shells 1500 max damage with an 8% fire chance, armor piercing shells 2050 max damage. One quad launcher reloads in 122 seconds, max damage 20,967, 12 kilometer range at 67 knots, the detectability of the torpedoes at 800 meters. AA defense is pretty good. You can see your main battery is dual purpose and does count as AA. Maneuverability, 34 knots, 730 meter turning circle, five second rudder shift time. These numbers all are not very good. Concealment, 5.4 on the surface, three kilometers flat from the air, 2.2 one firing in smoke. Here is the commander, Sajen Bing, base trait tin opener, Really crucial for a destroyer that's going to be shooting a lot of armor piercing, like this one. And so I would rank him up if you're going to use this ship. William Sims and Eric Bai are our inspirations. Row 1, Observant Rage. Row 2, Look at Me Now. Row 3, Twist and Track. You could use Perceptive, but I like a quicker turret traverse on a gunboat. Row 4, Smoke on the Water. And the legendary skill is unstoppable. Anyway, that's the Northern Dragon, folks. The real name of the ship is Fenyang. Hit that like button if you enjoyed it.